Okay guys, how you doing today? So today we're taking, I'm super excited about this one, we're taking a look at John Byrne's artwork, and more specifically, John Byrne's X-Men Artifact Edition. Um, IDW and Marvel Comics published this in 2018, and if you're not familiar with the Artifact Editions, they're basically a way to showcase the artist's art. They are scanned from the original art, meaning, um, they scan the whole page in like color, so I mean it's still black and white, but basically you can see see the textures and all this stuff. So this is uh, from the infamous uh, X Men one thirty six, and uh, this is a great cover. This I feel like this is an homage, and it's been homaged many times over the years. So it's this gorgeous uh, double page spread here. This was done for a reprint of. Uh, the infamous, famous uh, Dark Phoenix Saga, which uh, pretty much propelled Chris Claremont and John Byrne to um, rock god status of the comic world. They uh, worked on that together. Chris Claremont wrote and John Byrne drew. Terry Austin was his anchor. So this was uh, um, for a cover, a reprint of that story, Phoenix the Untold Saga, that came out. Uh, years after the original publication. Uh, these books are just gorgeous. They're the original size, the original art, so it definitely gives you more of a look of what um, what actually, you know, sort of behind the scenes, the nitty gritty, the little details that get lost on the pages of the actual printed publications. So this book here is specifically focusing on John's work on the X-Men. Uh, IDW, I think uh, Scott Dunbeard and Chris Royal are the editors on this and they just do an amazing job basically having to harvest and collect and uh, have people uh, lend art from their personal collections so that they can take the time to scan each and individual page. You can see how comics were made. Mostly it's digital now, but these are all done on art boards and uh, working with a penciler and an anchor and but you can see like scotch tape you can see uh red marker i mean they definitely did not know what these pages were going to be worth someday some of these pages are worth tens of thousands of dollars and they just basically crapped all over them so um this is from john's first uh issue i believe x-men 108 following uh new x-men co-creator dave cockrum who the book was bi-monthly, uh, and then they wanted to do it monthly, and Cockrum could not keep up with that pace. So John was a young gun and hungry to show what he was made of and had a reputation for being fast, so he took over the X-Men, and I basically think he uh, threatened death if uh, he did not get the X-Men. So back in the day, in the 70s and the 80s, and probably before that, it was uh, definitely a... Um, uh, you know, a, a watershed moment for comic book art and comic book artists. Uh, you can see, I mean, look how rough his style is in the beginning, and it's amazing to see how quickly and uh, beautifully it evolves, but the nuts and bolts are there. I mean, that's a burn face. Um, that's a burn chick, you know, that's a burn spaceship, that's a burn um, cosmic scene. I just, you know, a I can't say it enough, John Byrne is one of my favorite, if not my favorite comic book artists. And you'll see why as we look through here. I mean, there's tons of Byrne fans, so this is definitely a book uh, I recommend. If you're into John Byrne's art, artists in general, if you're an artist, I mean, it's just great to see just up close what really went into it, you know. You can do all this on a computer now, but uh, Terry Austin, the anchor, would have to use screens of Zipatone and cut it out with an X-Acto blade and glue it down to the page. I mean, there's a lot of craft that went into making these books. And, um, I mean, uh, this book smells good, so I can only imagine how the original pages smell. There's nothing better than the smell of, like, books in print. <laughs> so here we hit, we see, a uh, Vindicator, uh, uh, or Guardian, I believe. He, he was his initial age name. And uh, I think Jim Shooter said that was a conflict with Guardians of the Galaxy or some crazy stuff like that. So John Byrne said, fine, we'll call him Vindicator. And th he said Canada has nothing to vindicate. And they went back to calling him Guardian. And luckily nobody noticed. So that, that always confused me. So it was cool to find that out years later. 
Um, so this is, he's the leader of Alpha Flight in John Byrne's Canadian team creation, which is my favorite. And then we have like Storm and Colossus hanging out by the tree, by the lake. I always love these sort of, uh, intimate, um, sort of, you know, these are like the soap, soap opera moments that the X-Men always had that sort of made them, you know, special in a way. I mean, of course you want to see the action and all the money shots as you will. Speaking of which, look at that, uh. <laughs> so this, I, I don't, I think this is trying to show what an amateur guardian is at the time. So he takes a shot at Colossus, it bounces off Colossus' armored form and hits Moira McTaggart, um, Banshee, Sean Cassidy, not from the Partridge Tree, but uh, the Banshee superhero, uh, his girlfriend. Anyway, uh, so I, I kind of like that moment. It's like uh, Marvel is definitely known for showing their heroes as more human and screwing up. I mean, that was a big, that's not how you want to make your debut, right? Great shot at Storm utilizing her weather powers. And see here, we get to see like just I, this, not this book is John Byrne's art, but it should also definitely be, uh, you know, uh, a proud moment for Terry Austin as well. You can really see the, the work that went into his inking and just, like he did not um, take any shortcuts or coordinate, cut any corners. There's so much texture and so much line weight variation, how the line starts thick and gets thinner. And just, I mean, that's something that you really, really have to not only just have talent for, but you have to hone that craft that doesn't just come out of your pen. And I, even in digital inking, which I do now, you know, there's uh, pressure and width and just, just to see all this black and white art is just so amazing. This beast, that's the one, I think that's part of the appeal of John Byrne is there's no character that he doesn't draw well. Um, although there is one that I can think of, but I'm not gonna say it right now because we're not talking about that. But um, Magneto, Magneto, Potato, Potato. I wanna say Magneto, so that's how I'm gonna refer to him from here on out. Nobody beats Byrne at Magneto. <laughs> I just uh, contradicted myself. But uh, I love his helmet. I love the way he's always in darkness and he just, you know, I don't know. He's my favorite depiction of Magneto is John Byrne. He's my favorite depiction of a lot of characters, but he just draws everything so well. Reflection and I think Terry Austin just really captures that well. And we're still in the beginning of their run before things got super juicy. But I mean, I feel like there wasn't like a wasted part of John Byrne's run, you know, he was on it from 108, um, till 144, and that's pretty lengthy for an artist, especially, uh, considering that, um, I guess him and Chris Claremont, the writer, didn't get along so well, so you would never know it just reading these, uh, you know, I guess if it's, if the Beatles fault a lot, I guess it was worth it. Um, this is the, uh, robot nanny that took care of the X-Men when she were, well, took care of them, haha, -ha, when they were being held hostage by Magneto. Um, see, just, you know, just like the striking, like, uh, use of uh, negative space, the placement of the blacks and the whites just, just immediately comes off the page when you look at it, at the actual size. Uh, this is when we're getting into the savage land, and I don't know, not many people draw uh, Sauron as well as Byrne. This is sort of uh, a trope that um, comes up a lot in burn comic books, you know, the damsel in distress. But to his credit, you know, Claremont wrote it and it was the 70s, so I think that was uh, part of the course. I always love this effect here, this like uh, lightning shock. Oh yeah, I guess that would either be um, Sauron becoming Sauron or Storm fighting him and he got the upper hand. but. Beautiful art, nonetheless. Look at the texture and the pointillism that Terry puts into the clouds. And take note of the hatching here. Um, I love John Byrne's hatching. I think Terry Austin is a great compliment for that. Here's a gorgeous double page spread. Um, on Byrne's run on the X-Men, there were a lot of double page spreads uh, following an initial splash page, which uh, makes you think that he was lazy, but not, because look at all the gor gorgeous detail. First of all, and second of all, he kind of lamented them because he always felt it only propelled the story by one panel. And he's got a point there, but he's a pretty 
consistent four to six panel kind of guy and I think that he's been that way throughout most of his career but he's definitely one of those artists that gives you all the great shots but I think that's just because he's so talented because he's uh, he's I feel like he's first and foremost a storyteller he honors the medium in that regard Nightcrawler it's hard to believe that uh um, he way favored Wolverine over Nightcrawler and didn't really have much use for Nightcrawler because I always thought he drew him so well. And I think that's a testament to a great artist, too, is just putting the love into everything that you don't necessarily love. Um, some great textures and landscapes, and we're in the Savage Land era still. Um, let's see, it's snowing, so that's fun that, you know, now, of course, they could do this with uh, all the computer coloring, and so many things would just be left blank, and, you know, it's just uh, kind of breathtaking to see the art with all the, everything has to be drawn in, the every snowflake that you want to be shown, and, you know, the action lines, all this can be done with computer coloring, and there's so many shortcuts these days. Not to say that it's not, you know, is easy and they're still not as dramatic and beautiful comic card, but it just shows that this is the real nuts and bolts of the craft right here. And uh, what a great showcase for Terry Sanks because it takes a lot of skill to get all those little lines in there and have them, you know, all consistent with their weights and variances and stuff and still have it look good. I mean, I really feel like they hit the ground running. Or hit the ground running. Um, I don't know if they were paired up before this. I think they definitely worked together before, but I feel like it was a match made in heaven, and uh, a lot of people agree. Um, just like different patterns here, you just don't... I mean, where did he come up with that stuff? Uh, just I, I just feel like they showed such a love for their craft, you know? I really like when John Byrne gets artistic, and we'll be seeing more of that coming up. Um... Moses Magnum, what a great character. I mean, cheesy 70s costume, but you gotta love it, right? And Dave Cockrum designed Colossus, and you know, he was the co-creator of the new X-Men, and I always loved his costume designs. Uh, Byrne designed a lot of great characters, too. Great shots here, just like the art. Banshee is uh, showing us why he's called Banshee. Here we come with Guardian again. So these aren't complete runs, these artifact editions. It's, uh, I don't know, whatever they could come up with for the publication, because um, infamously, uh, uh, Terry Austin, um, at the time the anchors got, I believe, one third of the art they got to keep. And uh, Terry Austin has been sitting on his collection for years and refuses to lend them out for any uh, publication or printing such as this, which is a shame for the fans, uh, because, you know, I definitely love to see the complete run, but, um, hey, that's his choice, you know, um, who knows how he wants to use them, he's probably saving them for his rainy day account, and I don't blame him at all, so, uh, to each their own, but at least we get, you know, quite a bit of X-Men art has, uh, God, I'd love to own this original page, um, Rob Liefeld, um, infamous, famous, X-Force, Youngblood, Deadpool, um, current uh, G.I. Joe, Snake Eyes artist, owns a huge amount of original John Byrne art, and um, uh, I'm so jealous because I, apparently he has quite the collection, and apparently he went out quite a bit of his collection for this book to be made, and um, I'm curious as to which pages he owns. Maybe he'll share that with us someday in one of his podcasts or something. Anyway, so this great spa splash page of the first group shot of Alpha Plate, my favorite group. Apparently not everyone loves the Alpha Plate as much as I do, but they, it does have a huge cult following. Maybe it's like Twin Peaks, I guess, but which is a good analogy because I think when he left to, or he did the monthly series of Alpha Plate, I think it was very x file C and uh, Twin peaks -y. Here's Wolverine and his... Cowboy hat, of course, uh, nobody draws Wolverine better than Burn. Oh, uh, this is fun. Uh, Storm, I love this. Uh, this is a shot of her. I think this is going back to her apartment in New York from when she was a child, and now it's like this big crack house or whatever. And there's um, something hidden in here that somebody pointed out in one of my Burn groups that I'm not going to tell you what it is. There's an Easter egg, and it's 
um, kind of disgusting. So if you can find it, it's in this panel right here. Here looks to be a, a color mock-up of Arcade, and apparently that was all Claremont Burns said that he didn't come up with anything about Arcade, and I really like the Arcade storyline, so um, once again, if he didn't have anything to do with it, he drew the heck out of it. I mean, that was a lot of fun as a kid to see the X-Men in, like, basically what are uh, pin pong, not ping pong, ping, pinball, like they're in a pin, but giant pinball machine, and there's some Zipatone action on Cyclops. I used to just love these printer late like effects and a great splash page of spider-man there it's always fun uh that's the great thing about marvel is the, the shared universe they never had a problem cameoing their characters in other books there we go the pinball machine just there in um arcade world we get to see the beast um i think this is when they came back and they were united they thought they were dead just so much great art. A oh, great picture of uh, Jean's face there. Jern, Burns' faces have evolved over the years, and um, um, I definitely prefer like his old school faces. The women were very pretty, and um, you know, big eyes and round faces, and the men are all handsome. And hey, it was the seventies, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever that means, right? Some great, great pages here. Just so much great art. We're so lucky to have John Byrne as an artist. And, you know, I think that some people think that, uh, you know, their run is overrated. But when you look at just, you know, it was lightning in a bottle. They didn't plan it. They, they didn't have many shoulders to stand on, say, perhaps, you know, Stan Lee and... Uh, Jack Kirby and Dave Cockrum and Len Wine, who, you know, were the creators of the new X-Men work, Claremont, and Byrne eventually took over, but, I mean, they did their own thing, and they just, so many great storylines came out of their union, and so many stuff just done over and over again in the current X-Men mythos. I mean, Jean Grey's been killed and brought back to life more times than, uh, you, you can, um, possibly imagine and um, I guess that's an, a new she started she was dying when uh, before dying became cool in comic books and now everyone's dying and becoming resurrected left and right so death doesn't mean much in comics um, and uh, great picture of Colossus there I just love the way he draws Colossus uh, what a great transformation and quite an evil looking picture of uh, Peter there and I remember I think there's some great effect that must have been added in the printing afterwards because I feel like there's more going on there in that panel. Um, let's see. Madrox, the multiple man, Jamie, Jamie Madrox, who wound up eventually being in uh, Peter X, or Peter David's X-Force, who's a great character. Great shot of the X-Men here. I mean, these original pages have got to be worth a pretty penny, especially if it has a Great group shot and great picture of Colossus there. Um, comic art is quite lucrative, uh, especially if the right name is attached to it. I am kicking myself over the years going to conventions and seeing plenty of, you know, original burn art over the years. I feel like I was at a convention in Florida um, when I was in my mid 20s, oh, so many years ago, and uh, seeing just, you know, burn art and not wanting to pay like $100 a page, God forbid. I should have jumped on that crap, now that I think of it, but I probably could uh, own a condo or something. Um, not that I would ever, ever, ever sell any original art that I would acquire from Burn, because it's like, I mean, how could you? Look at these great pictures of Phoenix, and we got some action from Nightcrawler over there. Let's see. Uh, great picture of Wolverine at the Hellfire Club, infiltrating the Hellfire Club, but the pure fires, the henchmen of the Hellfire Club, um, who he quite killed quite a few of these characters, and uh, nobody batted an eye at the time. It seems a little jarring now, but um, I just love like him hiding in the rafters there, and what a great shot, the shading, and of course, like I said, all that would be done with computers now, and it's not, I, I don't know, this could be an unused page. It looks very um, different from the rest of the book. Um, let's see, different depictions throughout time, like, 
here's the X-Men all beat up and, uh, cause the Jason Wingard, uh, mastermind is manipulating Jean Grey into thinking that she's, I guess, the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club. And so here's how the X-Men should look as heroes. Here that, here's how they do look, uh, incarcerated. And here's how they would look if they were in the period that he's trying to make them think. And I think it's cool how they all, I don't know, just little flourishes like that. You get to see during a burn in Claremont run. And uh, once again, many props, great picture of uh, Dark Phoenix there. This is when things are really kicking into high gear with the Dark Phoenix storyline that would go on to um, be ruined on screen over and over again. And uh, I think John Byrne put it, put it pretty well. You know, this story was told over months, if not years of build up throughout the great double page spread here, the, the fate of the Phoenix, uh, uh, Jean Grey is now on trial as Phoenix for, you know, killing millions of souls. It wasn't Jean Grey, it was the Phoenix Force, but somebody's got to pay, right? That was a big point of contention and why probably this storyline has become so legendary. But as I was saying, they have yet to do it to a great effect on um, uh, screen. Apparently it's pretty good in the 90s cartoon, which I did not watch, but is uh, much beloved and not... Uh, uh, borrows heavily from the Burn Claremont run, if, from what I understand. Uh, just so much detail. Can you believe all this detail could possibly go into so many of these pages, these beautiful pages? And this is, you know, just John Burns X-Men run. I mean, there's two other volumes so far that I'll be covering. One's a Fantastic Four one, and one's a, just, I think, a miscellaneous Marvel, one of these gorgeous IDW books. Um, I just, this is an artist dream come true to this is the next best thing to holding the real pages in your hands because uh, these are <clears throat> direct scans from the art. So you definitely see everything that went into it. The page numbers, the uh, John Burns signature over here. Um, every, you know, you can see that the lettering um, is all done digitally now. And uh, it used to be hand lettered and in some cases, you know, pasted up over the original art or sometimes it, was done right on the original board, which uh, is a shame to me because you're covering up a lot of art that way. What a great double page spread of the X-Men in the danger room, which apparently John Byrne thought was silly um, and didn't like too much, but I always thought it was fun. Um, when I grew up reading the X-Men, you can see X Professor Xavier in there with Kitty and uh, the X-Men just fighting. Um, Snowbird, Guardian, Shaman, Alpha Flake, uh, Wendigo. I always thought Wendigo was hysterical, just how he always just showed Wendigo. But uh, of course, John Byrne draws him great. Um, you can't help but wonder if he was uh, an influence on Sasquatch, who is in the Alpha Flake, who looks a lot like him. Great picture of Shaman there. Uh, I love the silhouettes outside of the tent. Mm -hmm. When to go once again, his big crazy hair. So much action and just kinetic energy. Great Shadow Wolverine sinking his uh, razor sharp adamantium claws into uh, Wendigo's hide. Um, you know, just look at, I love this is, uh, John Byrne is so skilled as just, uh, you know, a craftsman or a draftsman. But he so uh, br always brings the art too. I just love like this transformation there and the, you know, mysterious and magical lines and shaman here and the great uh, silhouette of him conjuring up his magic and you know, it's easy to see why John Byrne is one of the most beloved comic book artists of the generation, um, of any generation really. He spans many decades since he began in the early seventies and. Uh, I think you can tie pretty much any decade to a significant, say perhaps, you know, the past two decades, uh, but significance of John Byrne contribution. And But even today he's doing a fan fiction book on his, which can be found on his website, uh, Byrne Robotics, a new uh, free X-Men story for the fans called X-Men Elseman, basically what he would have done had he stayed on the book and the art is just as good if not better than it is uh in these in the heyday of his career 
Great other picture of the danger room with Kitty, like in the middle of everything. I don't, he just captures so much with her body language and you can tell she's the new kid on the block. This is from uh, Days of Future Past, which is another story that went on to uh, be used in the movies, obviously, that was all burned, apparently. Um, so, you can't deny Burns' contribution to not only comics, but to the X-Men canon itself. You know, I think he owes as much to the X-Men as the X-Men owes to him, and definitely could be said for uh, Chris Claremont as well. Angel made some appearances in the X-Men. I don't think he was officially a team member at the time, but he, he hung around for a few adventures, and I've always liked the character, and of course, John Byrne draws him tremendously. Some more stuff going on here. Um, Sentinels. John Byrne draws great Sentinels. Um, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Um, great splash page of Kitty. Uh, Days of Future, Past, uh, Present, Future. Love this here. Not exactly a two-page spread, but the top panel does go across both pages. And I always loved how he drew Mystique. Um, I'm a John Byrne fan, get it? Storm is one of my favorite characters, and nobody nobody draws Storm better than John Byrne. And I just, uh, I dare you to show me anyone better. Uh, Mystique transforming there. Great effect. Just lots of great art. I couldn't recommend this book anymore. Oh, we're at the end already. This looks like an early splash page. You can see the roughness of the style, but of course the burn shines through like a star. This is one of my favorite burn pieces here. It's the X-Men corner box art, which I always love Marvel. Marvel always seemed, uh, you know, in the 60s they called it pop art or whatever. Marvel seemed always focused on the art and um, it had such great artists. And not to say in retrospect that I don't admire a lot of DC artists at the time, but um, I think that Marvel was winning it and probably has throughout most of the years. Although, I mean, of course DC has their fair share of amazing artists. Uh, great pencil sketch of Burn of the X-Men, just the classic X-Men. Just the guys, I guess, no storm there. Uh, great picture of Wolverine. This is like my favorite Wolverine. <clears throat> Just crazy and fighting. His costume's all ripped up. He's hairy. He looks like he could kill anything within the five minute mile radius. <laughs> uh, this is a page. I think this was supposed to be for X Men 138, which was the um, after the death of Phoenix when they decided to kill her. That was kind of a last minute change, so I guess Byrne had already drawn the opening sequence of 138, where had she lived, she was just gonna, her and Scott were gonna leave the X-Men. And uh, that was a great page, just pencils. But uh, this is from when, what is this, from the Untold Story, perhaps, where they, had she lived, um, instead of killing her, they, Shire, Lilandra, uh, basically turned her into a vegetable or like a five-year-old child mindset to strip the phoenix away from her, I guess. Mm -hmm. What it, this looks like, uh, just a scene in the danger room, Burn in Austin. The cover, look at X-Men 114, what a great cover this is. The They think the X-Men are dead, but they're actually in the Savage Land. You know how it is. Wish you were here, hope you don't, I'm not dead. Um, the blacks and whites and just the silhouettes and... You know, I love all the codes that you see. Uh, here you see Terry Austin's name, you see dates, you see, you know, notes to the printer in red and just all kinds of fun stuff in the bleed areas. And, you know, it gives you a look behind the scenes, if you will. Um, X-Men cover 116, gorgeous, 127, Proteus. Um, let's see. X-Men 129, the first appearance of Kitty Pride, and such a great cover. Uh, X-Men 133, Wolverine Kick and Butt. This cover is used for um, the variant or special edition of this book we're looking at. They use this image instead, which I don't know if that's the only difference, but... And this is the cover, the one we're looking at. Another great issue, 134. This is all from, you know, the Dark Phoenix storyline saga, which... 
like I said, if you need to send your kids to college, invest in some John Byrne art, original art, uh, 138, uh, Exit Cyclops, I guess he left after she died, and, um, this is the cover 139, this is, uh, Alpha Flight comes back in this one, not the whole team, but some of them. <clears throat> Always good to see Alpha Flight. Uh, 140, there with, this is the Alpha Flight guest, Snowbird guest appearance. Uh, the unused cover for X-Men 142, I think, and I don't know why it wasn't used, but the other cover is probably better anyway. Um, double page wrapper on cover for Phoenix the Untold Saga. And this is a self-portrait of John blowing his brains out or having his brains blowed out. So I think this is a, an afterwards by him. If you want some insight in that great double page spread from the Savage Land. And the back is the corner box art that uh, any Burn fan is familiar with. And so that's it. Another great addition from IDW. Um, John Burns X-Men Artifact Edition. Thanks for taking a minute to look at it with me. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and we'll cover some more artists later. Thanks so much. Bye.